Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. This is Harika. So in today's video, I'm going to show you uh, the use case that I have explained in the previous video, which is RSVP app. So I'm going to create a look alike app, uh, which look, look similar to like how we gonna, uh, how it appears when we are trying to do an RSVP for any of the UiPath events. So if you're unsure about it, I've shown you in the previous video, I will attach the link for that over here. And in the description, you can just check it out there and also i have ran a demo uh, for it in the previous video please check it out to get the idea of what we are going to look into uh, in this video okay uh, so firstly i'm gonna build an app so you should uh, so this is basically everything right from the scratch so even though if you don't have any idea or if you haven't prepared or created any app earlier using uipath then definitely it will help you you don't have to worry uh, there's no prerequisite actually for this so now i'm going to create a new app so i already have an rsvp app so i'm going to create rsvp demo app okay so in this, firstly, uh, you know, I will just take take a blank page. And after that, this is how uh, the interface looks like. This is App Studio. So once after we build the app, we can click on the preview where we can check out how the app looks like. Okay. So firstly, in the main page, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a control, uh, which will be uh, a header. So let's take a header. So I'm going to give the header name as uh, attendee information. Okay. So this is my header. Just lay, just to change some style to center and uh, adding one just to make it look big and let's make it bold and something like 42. Okay. Okay. So this looks good for me. So once after this is done, what is the next thing that I'm going to do here is let's take a container, okay? I'm going to take a container and put it over here. So inside this container, I'm going to have uh, the first name, okay? So this will be my control text box, okay? So let's take one text box. Okay, so let's style this to center and the information. Let's change this. Okay, um, to first name. Okay, here I can just mention Okay, so uh, yeah, in the similar way, I will take the next thing, which is a last name. Change this to last name. So what I'll do here is I'll just open a, a demo one, like the, um, the demo one that I've already created so that it will be easy for me to recreate it. Okay, let me go over there. Okay, so this is my RSVP app that I've already created. Okay, first name, last name, email, and what company or university you are part of. So it is like similar. You can just create the same text box and everything. Okay, so just change this to email. I'll just quickly create everything and I'll show you after that how I will bind the, uh, you know, values. So let's do. Copying three at a time. Okay. So it will be easy for me to create. Okay. So I'm just copying this whole thing. What company? Okay, this label, right? Part of next, this one. What is your job title? Okay. Uh, what is your job title and which city you are located in? 
next one is that okay done and after that mobile number and submit submit is a button okay so here i'm taking copy paste mobile number okay and here i'm gonna add one button let's copy and paste the button pull the button on to this okay so let's get this button to center and change this as submit that's it okay so once after this is done what is the next step that we have to do so here um the first thing is i have to bind it right i have to bind some value to this so in order to do that what i'm going to do here is i'm creating one app variable okay so here let's take str uh, first name okay first name and uh just take this and pull this value into this i'm going to bind it So what is the criteria here? Let me take a notepad and explain you clearly. After that, we will go into the process. So firstly, the idea here is to um, enter. The user enters the information into app, right? So that information we are retrieving using the app variables. So that's why we are creating app variables, correct? So these app variables will be collected and this should be given into the queue, okay? So I will show you the queue part later, okay? So how we will, uh, you know, overload or how we will combine these both, uh, you know, transfer the information between queue variables and app variables. I will show you in the next part uh, after this. But before to that, what we have to do, we have to um, add that queue item into this particular app, right? Add queue to this application okay to this app so once after that is done we can combine these two right so once after that is done what will happen user enters the information into app those app variables will take the information and once after we add the queue uh, attach the queue into this app this queue variables i mean like the app variables information will be going into the queue variables and an item is added or a transaction item is added into queue. Okay. Perfect, right? So this is what we are going to do. This is a step by step. So before to this, what we will do, we will create an app, right? We created an app already. So the first step is done. And the next step is entering the info into app. That will be done during the runtime. But we have to create the app variables. So I'm showing you how we can create the app variable. So this is the way. So I'm creating let's go here okay i'm creating here one more app variable so what is that str last name okay so once after this is created what we have to do we have to bind this over here so this value contains that correct and after that let's go and create an email variable str email just bind this and company str company so you can create multiple here only after that you can drag str role and after that what is the str mobile number okay and after that i think that's all so what you can do, you can just drag the company from here to here and then go city is there. Okay. So roll, roll here from here to here and uh, city, city I haven't created now. So what I'll do, I'll create the city, it's your city. Just pull from here to here. And the last one is mobile number str mobile number okay perfect so as soon as the user enters this information this particular uh, uh value this particular value contains all that information so after that what hap what has to happen 
the user will click on submit, right? So after clicking on submit, the event should be triggered. So what is that event? So it should uh, start the, it should add the items into the queue. So before to that, see, the add to the queue should happen, but we don't have any queue item. Like we don't have, we haven't added any queue, right? So which queue it should use? We don't have, we don't have any queues here. So for that, we should add the queues. So let's go over here and here we have an option to add the queue. Okay, so which queue we should add? So before to that, what we have to do here is, let me show you. In order to add the queue, we should have the queue created. So how we should create that queue, I'm going to tell you now. Okay, so let me show you. If you're confused, um, I will, I will put, I'll break this into pieces and I'll tell for you. So till now here, till here it is done, right? So in order to add the items into the queue, first we should attach that queue. We should add that queue into the app, right? So in order to do that, we should have the queue created in orchestrator and that queue should not be created like how we do manually. There should be a schema. Okay, there should be a schema that should be in line, that should be aligning with uh, with the items, like with the variables that we are giving here. Okay, so for that, what we have to do, we should create a queue. So I will show you how we can do that. So here, if you see, this is the documentation page, official documentation page. So only queues containing a specific data JSON schema file in the orchestrator support, supported by apps. Okay, so this is the main criteria that you should understand. To better understand how the criteria should look, uh, schema should look like, this is the example. The schema should look like this. Based on our requirement, we can modify this. Okay, so I'm going to give this particular link as well as the schema if possible this schema sometimes it won't support in the description if at all if it's not supporting i'll put it in the github you can just check it from there but uh you know i will provide all these things in the description you can just check it out okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create this okay so i have already created one i will show you let me just um yes this is the one so this is my queue okay so just the same thing that i've copied from here but instead of name so the required field is name right but i have something different which is f name right i have f name uh, my property and last name email company role city and the mobile number so these are the fields that i have So you can just add whatever the fields that you need as per your um, uh, schema. You can just change those particular fields here and here also the required field. Uh, if you if you think that's a mandatory field, you can just keep that over here. So the schema will not uh, break as per whatever you're mentioning over there. So this is what the schema that I have created. There's nothing um, critical over here. You just copy this and I have changed this property name and this this and i have removed this one because i don't need this and i just added whatever the fields that i need okay so just that's it i have done uh, i will give this particular thing also in the description you can just use as it is you don't have to change anything okay so this is the key, uh, schema that i've created so if you ask me how i have created a, a, a queue here let's go to the uh, orchestrator so here what i have done let's let's create a queue now okay i'm gonna create one queue here to show you okay so let's go to my tenant so in my tenant i'm gonna create a queue now So um, here in the modern temp, uh, that's my folder. So I'm going to create a queue. So just go to add queue and here create a new queue. And here uh, I'm just going to add that schema. Okay. This one, the same one that I have shown you. So I'm going to close this. I haven't changed anything. Just first name, last name, email, company, role, city, and the mobile number. Same things that we've created in the 
app so i'm using that and i would say uh demo rsvp queue okay okay just add done we have created that queue so now what you can do is just go to your app and uh, just this one and this is my app right so in this app what i'm going to do i'm gonna add here i'm gonna add queue okay so from my same tenant i'm adding it so from the modern temp i have this demo rsvp so you can just check those also here right you can just check all these values and say add so once after you add that it just takes time time sometimes first time to load and once after it gets added, you can see that particular queue here. Okay. So just go to your uh, page and here what you can do is in the submit. So this action has to happen after you click on submit, right? So in submit, click on edit rule. So you can add uh, here. Uh, let me let me delete and show you. Okay. So once after you click on submit, what should happen? You should add right you should add the item into the queue so just say this click here and add to queue okay so once you click on add to queue what happens here you should select what is the queue okay so this is my queue and input override so this is what i was talking about this is the main part okay so once after this is uh once after you come here so you just click the item and here what you have to do is um the first thing that should uh come here is you have to pick it from the queue okay so the item should come from here and what is the value that you are assigning to it what is the value from the app variable right str first name right similar way just add the other things what should come to the last name it should be str last name right so you should add like that for rest of so what is the next one email right email so here str let's copy from here str email okay and here um company Just do it for the rest of the items. You can just try it if you want for, you know, one, two items also. But I just thought I will create something like an RSVP app. So I'm trying to put it all the information that I need. Okay. So, but it, you can just try when you're experimenting. City. Then city is your city okay then mobile mobile and star mobile okay okay done um so uh, one two three four five six seven uh, so all the fields we have provided so once after that is done um what you can do is just to save this will be automatically saved but you can just click on save if it's not okay all changes saved right just close this and what what else should happen it should add the items into the queue that's it right so that uh, is the first thing so what we can do is i will run the workflow till here and we will see if it's working as expected or not and in the next video i'm gonna show you what we will do in order to um get the mail part okay so till this i will show if at all we are missing something we'll see So if the schema is not appropriate, it will show the error. So we'll see if it's working fine or not. Okay.
So as I mentioned in the previous video, this is my mail ID. If you have any questions, you can just reach out to me through this mail ID, okay? Okay. Mm. And just say submit. Should be able to see the items here. Perfect, right? Okay, so I've got everything that I have provided there. So this is perfect. I've got all the items that I have provided in my app. So we just created this app, right? Oh, sorry, Q, right? Uh, demo RSVP Q. And I could see the items got added into the Q and we can see them over here. So the next portion is as soon as I do this thing, this particular Q item should be, uh, you know, uh, uh, initialized, should be triggered and should provide me a mail that, you know, I have registered successfully, just like how I shown you in the previous video. So that comes as a part two and that's not so big thing. I will show you, but I wanted to put it detailedly because if someone even if they don't know, if they wanted to do it right from the scratch, I don't want them to uh, not understand things by leaving the minute details. So that's why I wanted to clearly explain. So if I uh, prolong this video, it will become so long. So that's why I will do that in the part two and I will release that very soon, maybe in two, three days. So you can just stay tuned to my channel, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll get the video as soon as i upload it so thank you so much for watching if you uh you know like this video please do hit the like button and also provide your valuable comments i just love to listen from you and also few people were asking some questions about gmail issues and app passwords they're missing i'm gonna release that in the next video please stay tuned uh there's a lot happening at my end i'm gonna frequently you know making time to make videos so just uh give me some time i'll be posting and i'll be uh, talking about all your issues and the questions that you have visited in the comment thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video bye